which makes them ideal for Vancouver weather. They're lined in the inside with a very soft, warm flocking, which is pure cotton. And so these are ideal West Coast coats. And the buttons that you see here are all handmade and then painted to match the design of the coat. Uh, the buttons are also handmade and handpicked for a while. They were trimmed from uh, last year's Christmas tree. They recycled the old tree. And uh, they're cut from a length of piece of wood that's been aged. This is apple wood from um, a uh, an apple orchard. And uh, it's one or two years old, so they don't warp when they dry. And basically, Harold slices them into slivers, and you have all the lovely grain, and uh, the bark is removed. And then he drills holes into the center, and then they become painted, as uh, we see on the coat. Uh, the coats. And the, nat the coats are natural material, 100% cotton, and this is painter's canvas, t uh, 10 ounce cotton duck. And so for a stiffer coat or, you know, a painting, it could be canvas, or perhaps for a smaller person, a little softer coat is also 100% pillow ticking. This is very dense, and uh, even if you put water on this, this is pretty water repellent. It'll just, uh, the water will stay wet on the outside, but you will stay dry on the inside. So with the acrylic paint, you have a total waterproof coating on the coat. Uh, this is a, a coat, but also a painting. And it's easier to paint by having it as a rectangle. And we know that the center of it, the neck area is over here and the sleeves come out this way and you might want to have a dramatic uh, angle and again the center part, the back, the interest area is over here. And the sides, the little details on the sides that are painted along here or along here are components that are actually added at the sleeves or along the front of the uh, coat, the button area. So all our work is done on the floor and thus the uh, knee pads and uh, just usually the regular paint and brush one works in details. We may have uh, two or three coats in process at the same time. The one is drying as the second one is being dabbled and also having it in front of you as you carry on the day's activities gives you a better idea on you have a chance to um, have an overview of the design and um, some paintings get to be so special they never get up to be made into coats so you've got uh, a wearable feature coat or a painting on your wall this moment here I'm uh, obsessed with uh, sort of abstract leopard spots. I like the movement and the shading in the background and you can add some um, special details in the middle. This is a softer coat in feather ticking with uh, more muted colors and some silvery and again the center back has a mandala type shape and a stencil design which Harold has done, and he has now incorporated uh, machine parts that were in the recycling dump. So he just puts paint on these uh, car transmission parts and then uses this as a stencil, and then he may work some design around it.
interested in extending the body, formed a group called Rare. We sold fun, zany clothes and held fashion shows. Body Art at the Vancouver Art Gallery, Sprong at the Vancouver Art Gallery, and Image at the Douglas Gallery on Davies Street. Working at the UBC Library and perusing Vogue and Bazaar magazines gave me many images of combining my life and my body art, including the bicycle that was decorated to match. Recycling was topical, and the summer of 1971, I had a recycling workshop in which everybody brought clothing, recycled sweaters, and we made rugs and other wearable art, including stuffed furniture, sweaters, dresses were knit on the knitting machine, and with the music were put into sculpture and movement. We were exploring sensory, feeling, satin. Pounds and pounds of beads were strung together to flow with the swing of Beatles music, weighing over about 30 pounds. Setting the mood, Jericho Beach, with this floral head to long jumpsuit. Animal prints were in style, mixed with real furs and hats, and heads were made from fleece, wool dyed into big, bouncy, soft colored heads. Men were part of our fashion line. The jewelry buckles were designed by Paul Binkard, a wonderful Vancouver sculptor jeweler. The family skirt for four people was over 30 feet in diameter and four people wore it with helium balloons making it float underneath to another opening at the Vancouver Art Gallery, 1971. One of my most famous pieces was Prairie North. It's woven leather with wolf tails attached and it could be hung in the tree as pussy willows or hung on the wall as a sculptural piece and then put on a body to form a wonderful evening wrap. Apart from evening wear, it was also worn on wonderful beach environments, rocky textures that I found on Lighthouse Park that suited the knit leathers that I was slowly getting involved with. Mohair and feathers. This was a pheasant that a hunter friend of mine had killed and the feathers were woven into this luxurious evening coat. A musical armor, again, woven leather with aluminum bands. Each aluminum band was a different musical note. Artist Dennis Vance had an ele electric sounding amplifying unit put into the outfit and as you moved your hands up and along your body you played music. These were a series of sensory wearables that were featured at the New York Museum of Contemporary Art in 1971. Acorns, leather, including one that eventually was eaten was a licorice knit from edible wearables to this modular outfit for the year 2000. This was a CP Air stewardesses contest put on in Vancouver in which I designed this modular outfit. The steward could wear the white leather and as she approached into a warmer climate, the body sections of arms and legs were removed forming an apron and shorts. So basically two outfits from one modular and a double purpose. Now this is the work of Pat Olesko, another artist who lives in New York and works with wearable art. She does these body extensions and then puts them on and lives the role of that character she's created. This is the playmate, which she appeared on the steps of the Playboy Club. And then keeping with uh, the 70s 
secretary. That image of bosom and nice hippie legs, which in this case were padded extensions, were the secretary that every businessman dreams of. The New York sophisticate. You can see her padded pockets with the big mouth, the chat, chat, chatter of New York, busy life, going down the street, chauffeurs letting her in, and a pad, luckily being over six foot tall, could wear all of these wonderful extensions. The protest, the hippie protesting for ecology, as you see here, no bra, and um, then moving on to the fish market, where Pat set up her stuffed fabric fishes, including her fish outfit, and sold her fishes next to the New York fishmongers. This. Uh, show was at the Museum of Modern Art in New York for a three-week period. Another artist is uh, Deborah Rappaport from California who used weaving as a technique. I myself used mainly crocheting and knit. And these series of pictures were Deborah's woven works that we photographed at the museum with a friend of mine, Anna Gilbert from Vancouver into settings for Harper's Bazaar magazine. Uh, one of the uh, body adornment or functional jewelry, an artist, William Clark, in the late 60s, while he lived in Vancouver, did a series of functional pieces of jewelry. This is called the Lady's Companion and it fits on one's wrist. It has to have the exact size of your wrist so it doesn't slip around. And you open its uh, waterproof airtight stopper and have your refreshment or your medicine whenever you're traveling. It also, when it's removed and put back together again, forms a nice piece of sculpture. Another piece of Williams was this brass neck piece, and it could wear, it could be worn on the head as a kind of crown, or it's also a neck piece that fits over your chest, and then a whole dress or a modern sculpture could be hinged from this collar piece. And another aspect of Williams. Uh, brass works were that one piece could interlink with another and it could actually become a ladder, an emergency ladder. So that was William Clark's work, who's from San Francisco and California. He also did uh, survival jewelry in which vials and sections of dried food and fruits were encased in uh, hand-blown glass um, jars that hung around your waist or your chest and you could survive in a week of uh, being lost in the jungle by having your objects. So through the years, I have a collection of jewelry, some that I've made and some that have been collected and some like this little chili necklace has your extra bottle of Tabasco in case you run into a restaurant that doesn't have the little zing that you're looking for. Some of them are ritual objects, African cowrie. Some of them are spiritual pieces, like from the Brazilian rainforest. And uh, one can become a walking piece of art. This one is designed by Paul Binkert, a Vancouver artist who did beautiful brass works. And again, these were specially designed for me. And it would fit in and fit into your waist. And now some of them had nice patina, and they also were body sculpture. New York artists were also extending their body shapes into jewelry. This was at the Museum of Contemporary Crafts. William Clark's antlers and his other body uh, jewelry, which included the brass 
earphone type shapes. One would have found William walking on the streets of Vancouver. At the museum in New York, people were invited to step in front of a camera and show their own wearable art. Here is the mirror man. And of course, tie-dyed. We all had tie-dyed in those days. Tie-dyed couple. The beginning of my moving sculpture. This was velour that was knit, and it has that wonderful velvety quality, the same as some of the sea creatures, and adding seashells to the jersey knit became the beginning of moving sculpture and dance. Sculptures were knit out of jersey fabric and a great big knitting needles. Some had one person and some up to two and three and four, and these were all shown on the beaches along Vancouver.
commissioned by me for Silva Harris, who's one of my uh, festival artists. And basically, it is the, the influence of Haida Northwest design that is so prominent and striking and uh, so beautiful that has influenced some of my wearable art. Some designs that I've painted on leather that represent the various animals, the totem animals for my dance company. And uh, this cape, again, is a uh, hanging, a button blanket a hanging, and could also be worn for ceremonies. And it becomes part of my dance production meeting place.